This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. As efforts for validating the index continue on behind the scenes, I'm actively starting to think about getting kits available for sale on an index machine store. Not kits for the entire machine, there's still enough validation work out there that that's still a bit off. But there is one part in the machine that's really annoying to get if you're just trying to build a machine for yourself, and that's the staging plate. The 120 millimeter by 600 millimeter laser cut steel panel that sits across the front-ish part of the machine that holds the motherboard and pumps and valves and all kinds of other stuff. If you try and buy one of these yourself, it'll cost you a fair bit for what it is. I got mine for about 120 bucks and it had a bunch of burrs on it still from the laser cutting process and it wasn't finished so it started to rust because I never finished it. So me and my friend Lucian who recently came on board have been working on trying to get a staging plate available for sale. And a few days ago we got an incredibly exciting package from one of our vendors. Oh! <laughs> Look at this welded crate. That's so cool. Holy All right, let's crack it open. Oh my God. After Lucian gave himself a hernia, we cracked the sucker open. This is our first part from a vendor, so we were really excited. Oh my god! What the frick? Look at this! Holy shit! Dude, we got a freaking custom part from a vendor. Yeah. <laughs> this thing is an absolute beaut with the matte black powder coat. Mmm, I'm into it. I'm so into it. Now at first glance, this looks absolutely beautiful. But before I'd feel comfortable putting this online in a store, we have to do a few things to make sure that it's accomplishing its goal. One of these things that you typically do in a manufacturing setting where you're getting a custom part from a vendor is something called an FAI, or a first article inspection. This is a process you go through to take a look at all the critical dimensions of your part, the surface quality and the cosmetic standards, and in general, a full overview of the part to make sure that the process your vendor is using or the outgoing quality control checks that you're vendor is using are sufficient for your application. Now the vendor sent us some FAI information that they took, but I want to run my own tests. Mainly, I want to get this thing mounted onto an index and check the flatness of it to make sure that the plane of the staging plate is relatively parallel with the X and Y movement of the gantry. This is really important for keeping things in the right focal distance of the camera, the downward facing camera. If the plate bows too much, then the image will get fuzzy as it goes out of focus and we're not gonna get good image capture. Also, although the nozzle is slightly compliant, it would be really good to make sure that the plate is incredibly flat and we don't need to rely on that springiness at all if possible. Now, it's important to say that this is gonna be the only thing on the index machine store to start. There is still a lot of validation work that needs to be done in the index before I would ever feel comfortable selling it to anybody, but that work is coming along really well and it is definitely happening in the future that kits will be available. So how the heck am I gonna measure this? Ideally, putting this thing on a CMM is the best way to measure flatness. This is the definition of a CMM. I'll also put a link so you can check it out and see what it actually does. But CMMs are like hundreds of thousands of dollars and I don't have one. I don't even have access to one. So a CMM is out. Getting a granite block is also an option. These are precision ground flat surfaces that you can put things on to make sure that they're incredibly flat. And with some minimally expensive tooling, you can check and see what a flatness spec is. If you're interested in this kind of thing, GD&T is a very interesting world to dive down deep into. I'll put a link in the description about GD&T if you want to read more about qualifying parts in that way. But because our tolerance comparatively to some other applications you would need a CMM for is pretty loose for this part, we're going to do some functional testing and some light data collection actually using the index. I'm gonna mount the staging plate onto my machine and then I'm gonna make a modified adapter for a dial indicator so we can go ahead and measure the flatness along the entire surface of the staging plate programmatically. Although there will be variation due to the fact that the index itself is not a granite block or CMM level of precision, it's still going to give us a broad enough idea of how flat things are so we can make a judgment call about whether or not this is gonna do the job. Realistically, looking at this plate, it's fine. It's definitely going to work. It's not bowing in any way whatsoever. You put it on a flat table, you can see it's pretty good. This is a due diligence I just want to go through to make sure that we have some actual hard data to show how flat this thing is. And this is what we're gonna use. This fancy little thing will measure to see exactly how far this plunger has been pushed up. So what I'm gonna do is design a modified right Z gantry for the index that will mount this thing onto it. And then using some CAN G code, I'll move through and measure a whole bunch of positions along the length of the staging plate and we'll get some flatness data to FreeCAD.
how cool this is. <laughs> it's so rad. Not only just because it's an awesome 3D visualization of all the data that I gathered, but also you can so clearly see an incredibly slight bow in the staging plate. Now you'll see that it actually looks pretty unevenly bowed and it goes up way higher in the higher X direction. This is almost definitely because I mounted the dial indicator on the right Z gantry, so it's able to measure farther right and closer to the actual rail. The first four X positions are actually perfectly centered on the staging plate. The fifth one is just really far over the edge that I couldn't get a mirror image of on the minimum X direction because of how I mounted it. But anyway, how freaking cool! What a consistent, even bow across. You can see a little bit of variation in the Y axis, but most of it's across the X. This is exactly the kind of error that I was looking for. Not only is it incredibly small, we're talking about 0.8 of a millimeter, so that's 800 microns across 600 millimeter width, but it's also completely unsupported, and the foot is a thing that can also be added in here. The foot being the part that goes underneath the upwards facing camera that breaks that long unsupported beam into two. I wanted to run this test on an unsupported staging plate just to see what the absolute worst case scenario was, and even that is totally acceptable. With the foot, there's gonna be no problems. <laughs> It's so sweet, it's so cool. Also, the last time that I ran a validation test, a ton of people were asking me to post the code, so I've done that. I started taking my validation tests that I've been running and putting them up into a repository. I'll add a link in the description if you wanna take a peek at this code in my Jupyter notebooks of how I'm analyzing the data and visualizing it, and I'll be continuing to update it with all other validation tests that I run as time goes on. All right, so there we go. It is a pretty minimal test, and it's functional, not using actual metrology equipment, but it definitely tells the story about what order of magnitude of deflection is present in this part and whether or not it's gonna do the job. So with that being said, the staging plate is now currently for sale on shop.indexmachines.io. I've already told the Discord that these are up for sale, so if you wanna get in ahead of time, pop into the Discord so you can be notified when stuff like this happens. It is just one part of the machine, but it's the part that's hardest to get if you're building your own. That's a lot of the calculus that Lucian and I went through about figuring out how can we get something out the door, and also the thing that's gonna be the most valuable to folks trying to build up their own index and help with R&D and get more people using them. This part is really the most annoying to get your hands on, and that's why we picked it. As I continue to focus more and more on getting kits like this out the door, I want to reiterate that this will always be an open source project. It is incredibly important to me that it is always possible for someone to make one of these themselves and you will never have to go through me and index machines if you want an index. But we're pursuing selling them to help fund R&D and also get people indexes that don't want to have to build it themselves. All right, that's it for this one. You will not see me in two weeks for another video because I'm taking a break. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Well, I'm actually not really taking a break. I'll still be working on company stuff. So I'll be skipping the next upload. I'll be going on a trip, partially for work, partially for fun. And if I get around to it, I might make a few short little videos in the process as I go through and I'll be posting them on my Patreon. Speaking of which, if you'd like to help support me and projects like The Index, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I wanna thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. Little sneak peek here, Motherboard Rev 3. Oh yeah, these boards are so pretty. <laughs> I'm literally in the middle of spinning these up right now. They're just, they're beautiful. They're so nice. Per usual, I went with a matte black gold finish. As always, PCB Way has them come out just beautifully. If you're looking for a board shop, I highly recommend PCB Way. Thank you so much to PCB Way for sponsoring this video.